as we start today's agenda, as we open up all the possibilities, how can we be more mindful to think about, it's not what you look at what matters, but it's what you see. And being really intentional about the space that we're all entering. This is again, your pause moment. If you feel like, okay, I've been running around all week. I'm like, take a deep breath. This is, see this as a treat. <laughs> we're gonna now just jam and ideate, connect and have fun and talk about something serious while having fun because you all already work on this so much. I wanna pause on the word active listening that I've shared uh, in the chat and also in our email, uh, in the chat, I mean in Slack, because as experts, which all of you are of many domains, we all come with our different perspective into this world. Oh, Monica, you know what? I've attended so many of these, but I already know how this works. I already know what my expectation is. Oh, I already know when somebody says they're doing this and that, like this is probably what they're thinking. And I just wanna highlight that before we let our minds wander that way, could we take a moment to just highlight, hey, what, why am I feeling that way before I really get to know what this person who I'm speaking with is feeling. And so I just want to emphasize again, because we come from so many domains, so many experiences, before we assume why or what is being shared and how somebody's feeling, let's take a moment to be curious and say, hmm, I wonder what's being shared. I wonder what could be done differently. And so again, for those who are just joining in, this is Monica Kang. Uh, I'm the one who's been sending you a lot of emails uh, as one of the co-hosts of the organizer. Of course, this really would not have happened if we didn't have Patricio, but also NSF, uh, as you know, who has been part of this big project really helped us bring together. And we're gonna hear a little bit more from them shortly, what is behind the scene. But I just wanna take a moment to highlight <sighs> setting that intention. So with that being said, I am excited to share and just celebrate who is here. And again, actually right before this call, uh, our organizers were just debriefing again, just to highlight that this number, uh, fortunately is no longer accurate. We've had more participants sign up since I finalized this slide since last night, because we had last minute people saying that, whoa, I didn't know about this. I want to be here. And this is such an important conversation. And so I'm so thrilled that you chose to be here, knowing that how important this is. Thank you, Saja. And thank you everyone for sharing your comments in the chat. And I am proud. Again, I know we could do still better. There's always room for improvement, but knowing how many of you express, Monica, please help make sure we have a person of disability. We have 44 individuals. Again, we could do always more, but I'm glad at least 30% of those who are both in Central, which means live participation here, as well as those who have shared their thoughts in the peripheral uh, and the surveys and Slack are a person of disability. And I hope that puts into the lens as you're sharing discussions, there is someone here in the room who can say, hey, I can share about my experience and I can share about my community. And again, we have diverse industries from academia, government, caregivers, and organizations. And 40 plus of you have expressed, I would love to share my voice because there's an angle that needs to be represented. So thank you, thank you, thank you again for taking a moment to be here and really settling. And thanks to Aiden, we did a little da -da 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 behind the scene to ask what is the word that's really coming up from all of you? And people came up a lot. And we were happy because we were like, ah, we have the right people who care about the people. And so as you're coming in, whether you just joined or you joined a few minutes ago, I hope that as you're settling in for today's first day, that you're in the right room. These are people just like you who know how and why this is so important and that there's still room for work to be done. This is why we're here. Wait, so I keep saying about this business as unusual. What do you mean by that, Monica? Well, my non... <laughs> Oh, yes, please. Thank you, Cheryl, for reminding me on the visuals, uh, the visual that I just 
drawn is the word cloud that is drawn from the survey response. Uh, and I see the word people, technology, academia showing up in the center means that that was the words that showed up the most. Uh, on the side, we have words such as feedback, uh, university, uh, brainstorming, glad we're going to be doing plenty of that. Uh, participate, glad you're all here participating, and disabilities, which is why we are here in technologies as well. So yes, please, if there are comments or things I might have missed, please, please communicate with me and share in the chat or raise your hand so that I can look out for you as well. Um, Thank you. Uh, some of the slides, but not all of them. So thank you, Tim, for raising that. If there are particular points that will be helpful, let us know. Uh, but we thought we don't overwhelm you before you join, which is why. So if there is anyone who was here, it's like, hey, actually reading the slide together on my own could be helpful. Just share it in the chat or let Jennifer know who's in the room and she would be Jennifer Hart. Jennifer Hart, if you can put a comment in the chat so that way people could look out for you would be helpful. Okay. So with that, perfect. Thank you, Jennifer. Business unusual. I thought this would be a great way to introduce our two wonderful speakers who's going to get a chance to actually share in their own words why this is business as unusual. But I thought I'd do my quick demo as a non-academic person who's trying to decipher all of this. Because I sure enough, I mean, pretty, I, I've shared even in our first meeting, I have a ton of questions <laughs> because this is so exciting. But also, I'm just trying to wrap my brain around, wait, why is this so different? And why are we taking this different approach? And why, what do you mean by it's different? So I just want to highlight three different angles. And pretty, you know, maybe you can correct me if I've misinterpreted any. But one, this is a unique opportunity to bring multiple disciplinary experts. So I just want to highlight again, we have so many people here, not only person who are working in accessibility, a person with disability, but also individuals who are in multiple spans and of different experts. So look out for that. And we're so grateful you're bringing that voice with us here together. Number two, we also find that it's exciting to hear about that business unusual is that this is an opportunity to identify what should be developed by asking the experts, all of you, instead of assuming from behind the scene at NSF. And so we want to hear your voice. We want to hear your thoughts, your perspectives, your disagreements. Please bring them all to surface. We will not know what you think. Unfortunately, we have not figured out an AI to read everyone's mind. So we will not know how you feel, what you think, what you are excited about. So please share because we all want to know before assuming because that's what NSF is like. Maybe we need to stop assuming what needs to be developed. So that's why business is unusual. And three, as a result, that's why we have the end users from the beginning. And this was the reason why when we shared that word cloud, we were so pumped to hear from all of you expressing multiple times, I please make sure these organizers who's putting this together is thinking about the end user because that is always left out. This is why this is business unusual. And this is why we are so grateful all of you are here again. I'm sharing the slide that I just captured uh, verbally about why I'm highlighting business unusual. And I just want to highlight this again a little bit more because many of us, whether you come from different backgrounds of academia, uh, this is academia unusual, I hope. And for those who are new to, I've never heard of NSF. This is the first time. Welcome. I was just there not so long ago. So we are in the right crowd as a business owner. And so with that, I just want to highlight why I think and what I heard from all of you and why we are here really goes down to four goals that I've highlighted here in this slide. One, to reimagine possibilities. So I ask us to give us the courage that let's be daring. And especially for today and the second day where it's going to be divergent thinking, I want to encourage us the temptation of not saying, Oh, but you know, we've done that and it didn't work out. That one is too expensive. Or that one, we can't do that because it's going to take a long time. I see some handshake, right? We've heard enough of that narrative. So let's take a moment to highlight that. Yes, it might feel that way, but focusing on what if we imagine we can, what would be the elements that could help us do that differently? 
and focus on manifesting that because that's that's where the research we could potentially explore. So I want to encourage yes and and being daring to that. And number two, we're going to learn a lot about what's already been done because all of you have been doing so much already. So we want to highlight that, learn about that. We want to learn about that because we want to focus on what's not been done. So we kind of need to know, okay, what has been done to understand what has continued to need to be done. And then as a few of us have shared at the very beginning, we and many of you have shared, looking forward to connecting with one another. With that note being said, can we do a warm uh, visual uh, gratitude and welcoming to Pradeep and Grace. And again, for anyone who are just joining us in, please, please use the chat or raise your hand function. If any of us speak too fast or I get excited if I speak fast, that's my excitement. So please, I apologize in advance. I'm just too excited to be here with all of you. Uh, and so with that being said, Pradeep, I think the floor is yours. Could we give a warm welcoming uh, to Pradeep first, who's going to welcome us? Thank you, Monica. Really, really appreciate it. Wonderful opening remarks from you. So thank you. You know, before I, before I start, I thought I'll start with something uh, that really struck me just a couple of days back. I saw a really good review of a book. Uh, it's called The Invention of Miracles. Uh, it's written by Katie Booth who was a faculty at University of Pittsburgh. And the book is about Alexander Graham Bell. And most people know him as, quote unquote, the inventor of the telephone. But it's a very interesting and very fascinating story about how Alexander Graham Bell actually worked very hard to not adopt ASL, in the schools. This is going back, you know, some time, so many years, but really how, you know, he came from a family uh, where some of his family members were actually could not hear, they were deaf. And it's a very fascinating dimension of uh, Alexander Graham Bell's life that I did not know and, and how hard other people, he, he was actually preaching what is called as oralism. And, and some of you probably know much more about it than I do, but I'm just reading that book uh, and it's a wonderful, yeah, I think somebody just said, Rua said that he was an oralist and, and something that really struck me, I thought this would be a very good thing to point out uh, to how far we have come along and what kinds of things we think we know about our scientists and, and you know, technologists and so on and so forth. So this particular uh, slide that I'm showing uh, says basically welcoming you to this wonderful workshop. Uh, hats off to Patricio, uh, hats off to Grace, my colleague at NSF, Grace Wong, um, and Ted Conway. And we have one more workshop, uh, which is being led by Vinod. And I know Vinod is part of the audience as well. So it's really a series of two uh, workshops here that we are, we are conducting, we are sponsoring. And in terms of dollars and cents, let me make it very, very simple for you why what you're doing uh, is very important. Uh, we have already invested close to quarter million dollars into these workshops already, okay? But what's more important is between these two workshops, this group is really, you have the power to kind of see how this very modest investment can ultimately lead to something that is in the you know, tune of 25 to 30 to 35 million dollars of research for, you know, for the purposes of better lives ultimately, better rehabilitative, better assistive technologies and workforce inclusion. That is the focus of Vinod's workshop that's also happening uh, you know, soon. So really what's at, on the line here is you have the power of this group has the power to really discuss, come up with ideas, themes, 
that are both interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary, as Monica pointed out, as well as convergent. You know, both uh, uh, you know are important. And then finally, something that's ready for acceleration. So I really want you to keep these two words in mind, which is convergence, which is multiple disciplines coming together, and then acceleration. That means we are really looking for use inspired research. Can we please go to the next biograph? Thank you. So this one shows a, a picture of our uh, brand new NSF director, Dr. Setu Raman Panchanathan. And what he is focused on, this visual also shows that this really, he is focused on partnerships, translation, and people, you know, so tip. Trans, uh, you know, partnerships, innovation, and, and uh, really that has been the focus, not only for us in the Convergence Accelerator, but really the focus for the entire National Science Foundation. So NSF is very big on translational research. Of course, NSF, National Science Foundation, is the largest supporter of basic research among the federal agencies. Could we please go to the next biograph, Monica? Thank you. So we are, this biograph actually just shows a, a, a visual of different things kind of coming together, but then also the way, what is the purpose of these workshops and, and what is the mission and vision? The mission for us is really to bring research that is already done in the basic research space, right? So a ton of research has already been done, what can be described as fundamental or basic research. We are the consumers, right, of basic research. And we really want to now take the next step. And we want to have ideas, themes coming out of this workshop report that we can ultimately translate into a, what we call as a track or a funding opportunity uh, to the tune of 25 to 30 to 35 million dollars, okay, to be invested in high quality projects that are ready for coming up with some deliverables. That is the ultimate goal. That is the ultimate charge for you. And it is a very competitive process. So it is not like this group and Vinod's group gets together, you come up with a report and we write a solicitation, right? I want you to understand that, that NSF is a very competitive place in terms of what kinds of funding opportunities come out. So there will be many other topics um, ranging from sustainability, climate change, energy technologies, you name it. And then this topic uh, in terms of persons with disabilities would be one of them that's actually going to be in, in a competition. So when you're thinking about Olympics in August uh, in, in Japan, uh, it is going to be as competitive as the Olympics and we want to win the gold medal here. That's what I would say to you, right? Can we please go to the next one? Uh, we can actually skip this in the interest of time. Um, here is our team. I'll just kind of, uh, we'll be sharing these view graphs. This view graph actually shows our office head, Doug Mon, uh, and then it has the images of other program directors. So we really are ourselves a very diverse team. Uh, and certainly I am very you know, thankful to Grace Wong, who is a program director in engineering, and Ted Conway, I'm very, very thankful to Ted. Uh, he is a former NSF program director. So thank you to both of you, as well as Patricio, you and Vinod, for really trying to make this happen. So could we please go to the next one? Thank you, Vin. So the, the, one of the key things that really stuck with what Monica pointed out in her opening remarks is that this is business unusual. And I really like that phrase that this is business unusual. So I'm hoping, you know, instead of reading this view graph to you in terms of what the view graph actually shows is the characteristics of what we are looking for convergence, accelerator, vis-a-vis, -vis, uh, you know, what may happen in typical NSF projects. And the reason why this is business unusual is we are really focused on 
translational research, we are focused on outcomes. You know, what can happen? Just imagine two to three years down the road, you know, from now, you know, what kinds of assistive technologies, what kind of rehabilitative technologies, what kinds of strategies that could be incorporated to enhance the participation of people with disabilities in the workforce? Will those actually make a difference in their lives? Okay, so what can we deliver for the American taxpayers? Think about that as, as you deliberate and discuss different ideas, right? What are the needs in the field, okay? How do the, what, what do the users of the consumers of these technologies, what do they think? You know, what are their wishes? What, what do they require to improve their quality? Not about what research you want to do, you know, and then figure out, kind of think about the other way around. Instead of you doing the research, quote unquote, and then hoping somebody might, uh, you know, it might come useful to somebody, kind of turn that around. You know, that's why this is business unusual. You know, so it's really translational and this is not long-term. We don't want to be waiting for five to 10 years, right? We are looking for a time frame for two to three years. And then the hope is that either your inventions, your technologies, your knowledge, the know-how that you generate will be either further supported by other angel investors, venture capitalists, potentially other funding agencies such as NIH, you know, you name it, there will be a pathway towards commercialization. So we are not expecting commercial products per se. What we are expecting are low fidelity prototypes at the end of phase one and something that is a tangible deliverable, right? At the end of phase two. And phase one for these projects, eventually once this kind of transitions into a track, the phase one projects are one year, about $750,000 in budget in one year. And then second phase two, it's a smaller number of projects, that's two years, and that's up to $5 million per project, right? So that's how we come to that number of about 25 to 30 million dollars. So I want you to think translation, I want you to think about use-inspired research, and I want you to really think about public, private, and other sorts of partnerships. So this is not about one faculty member or one industry person doing something together. Think about this as a platform. This is why this ideation process really brings begins with these workshops. So what I'm hoping for is with this group and Vinod's group, uh, you will tell us, you will advise NSF, myself, Grace, you know, and, and my, our NSF colleagues that, you know, these are the areas where we as community, you know, this is where we think are the actual research needs that nobody is funding. It's, it's maybe uh, not NIH's domain and maybe it's not DARPA and maybe it's not so-and-so and it is too high risk for some of the private sector, but this funding will enable these kinds of tangible outcomes. So that is what we're looking for. Could we go to the next slide, please? So again, I just kind of mentioned this. So this particular view graph basically shows you the different, the way the program, the program is structured. So it shows ideation, which is where we are right now. We are trying to figure out what tracks could be supported, right? So I want to be very, very clear. This is, think about the Olympics, right? Think about the gold medal, right? Uh, we want to win the gold medal, right? I don't want to be thinking about a silver. There's only gold and silver, that's it, okay? Uh, and I, I would much rather win the gold, right? Uh, so you help us with this ideation process. So the output of your workshop, which has to be, uh, in a short report that Patricio and Vinod, each one of them will be preparing very quickly. So we don't have a whole lot of time. You know, that's another thing I want you to emphasize. So we are in May right now. In June or towards the end of middle of June or end of June, we will be collecting all the reports. You know, there are 12 workshops going on altogether. So the two of them are Patricio's and Vinod's. There are 10 other workshops that are happening as we speak right? 
All of them will be submitting their project reports to NSF, okay? And then the NSF leadership, our office, the different uh, equivalents of different deans, if you will, and the vice presidents for research. So what are called as ADs and the uh, finally the office of the director, they will then evaluate and figure out, okay, these are the two ideas that will go forward. So that's why I cannot uh, emphasize more uh, the competitive nature of this uh, program. And then once, if it gets selected, and I'm really hopeful, I'm very passionate about this topic, so I need your help, okay? I'm very, very committed to this topic. I'm very passionate about it. And that's why we are here. You know, me and Grace, we've worked very hard to make this happen. Uh, just to give you kudos to Patricio and Vinod, at this ideation project, when we selected 12 ideas, they were selected out of about 200 ideas, okay? So we have come from 200 to 12, okay? So 200 ideas were evaluated inside NSF for workshops, then 12 are picked for workshop. And then out of these 12, like I said, we, we are shooting for gold, right? That's what, that's where we are shooting for, okay? Could we go to the next one, please? Right. So I'm going to skip some of these tracks. Uh, so let me yeah, stay on this one for a second. Yeah. So the quantum, like these are the different tracks that are already in place. So A, B, C, D. So track C, this visual actually just shows that track C, when we say track, that means it's a funded activity. So track C is something that I'm leading right now, has to do with quantum technology. And we have 11 phase teams. And those 11 phase team one teams are getting ready to submit their phase two proposals on coming Monday. And then we expect to probably select, you know, a few of those for phase two, okay? Uh, we can go to the next one, actually skip the next one. Uh, so again, so where we are right now, this is where we are right now. We have already funded, you know, several different tracks, A, B, C, D, and E, and they're all on very different topics. So track G here shown in this visual, it says it's assistive rehabilitative technologies and workforce inclusions of PWDs, persons with disabilities. So I'm hoping that this is the track that will go forward, okay? So that is your uh, charge. Can we go to the next slide, please? All right, uh, this just shows you and these view graphs are, are available to you or would be made available to you. Please share them. Uh, Monica and Patricio, please uh, help, you know, share these. This just tells you the competitive nature of this sport here, right? So you can just see there are themes on conservation, there are themes on climate change, sustainability, education, election administration, smart agriculture, precision agriculture, and then of course the the one. This this is just arranged alphabetically, so I don't want you to think uh, that workforce. Uh, rehabilitation is the last topic. No, it's not. It's just an alphabetical list. In my one, my way of thinking, it's number one topic. So please, please, please uh, do what you can. Uh, I just would close out by saying that think about the use-inspired nature of the research. That's very, very important. It is not going to be a workshop. I've discussed this with Patricio and Ted and Grace and Vinod that this is not about, okay, here is my little research project. And I think this should be, you know, this is what should turn into a, a funding opportunity. No, try to think much bigger, try to think broader, right? What are the needs on the part of the community that you ultimately are doing this research for? That's where the use inspired dimension comes in. The second piece is, some ideas might be great in terms of fundamental research, but this program will not support those kinds of activities. We are the consumers of that basic research. You know, something that may have been already funded that the program Ted and Grace were leading, something that might have been funded through NIH, DARPA, you name it. We are taking the next step. So this is not about basic research and the key aspects are convergence. Again, we want not only computer scientists, robotists, 
engineers, biomedical engineers. We want people, and the slide, Monica, that you showed really reflects the kind of diversity we are looking for. We want people who are users. We want organizations. We want nonprofits. We want insurance companies. We want, you can think of, you know, device manufacturers, right? So think about as broadly as you possibly can and how can those teams come together, right? So I hope uh, that my message about convergence, acceleration, the translational dimension, and really what is at stake here. And this is not for me, this is not for Grace, this is not for Ted or Patricio or Vinod or Monica. This is about all of us. This is about how can we make the lives of persons with disability better? How can we lead them to better opportunities? That is what we are really looking for. And again, I want to sincerely thank you, all of you, uh, for being part of this. And I wish you the well, please reach out to me anytime. Uh, my email is on that view graph. I'm more than happy to discuss this with you. Thank you very much. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Pretty, very much uh, again for taking a moment to share and doing a deep download uh, of everything that you have mentioned. Thank you, thank you. If we can share a virtual hand clap appreciation. I just want to also follow up on the question, a wonderful comment that was raised. I wanted to circle back on your wonderful question because he just wanted to confirm, based on all these topics, these are great to see that it's all shared. And can we just confirm that does it mean that in all these conversations, is there somebody who's going to be advocating for a person with disability or is it only in our session who's going to be focusing on that? Uh, so to word in his question, he says, do all of these works are also covered the disabled person as part of their scope? If you can help confirm that, I think before I have Grace, that'll be wonderful. Yeah, so, so the topics that you see on the slide, right? Uh, if I understand the question yes. right. Yes, please. So those are the 12 ideas or 12 workshops. If I can, you know, if you add those numbers up, they'll add up to 12. Those are the ideas that came from the community right, overall across the mm -hmm. community, right? And these, all these workshops, for example, climate change and modeling and geospatial observation, those workshops, every topic that is listed, those are the workshops that are happening now, right? And just like this workshop is happening and Vinod's will be happening soon. And then each one of them will come up with a report. Those topics or those reports are then internally uh, deliberated within the National Science Foundation. They are certainly discussed within the Convergence Office, Convergence Accelerator Office. Mm. They are also uh, discussed with the different, what are called as in NSF, they are called ADs, right? Assistant directors. Assistant directors, very simply put, in the academic terminology, they are the deans, right? So think about dean of engineering, dean of computer science, you know, and then they are ultimately presented to the office of the director, which is Dr. Panchanathan's office. And yeah. they ultimately help us decide which yeah. will get converted into funding opportunities. Yeah, Pradeep, sorry, maybe my question, I, I didn't do a good enough job explaining the question. Uh, my apologies is that what I wanted to uh, follow up on that wonderful insight is to confirm because all of our audience here, of course, you know, including what you've shared is sure. it is important for, you know, the voices of disabilities to be represented in all of these topics. And so there was just a confirmation. Is there somebody in any of these sessions who is also going to be looking out for what the experience or the perspective will be for a disabled person? people or person in a conservation co topic or climate change, or is this the only room that conversation is happening? So that was a yeah. confirmation. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. hope I did a better job asking. No, that. no, thank my you. Apologies. Yeah, my, I think I misunderstood what you said, my my bad. Uh, but so, so coming to what you're asking, right? Uh, certainly NSF across the board, and, and I'll drop in a link. Uh, uh, they just released a report yesterday about participation of women, minorities and persons with disabilities. Uh, I've shared that report, I think link with Patricio and Vinod, both of them. So NSF wants, uh, in terms of R&D as such, right? We want to encourage participation from persons with disabilities, women and underrepresented minorities in everything that we do, right? 
But this is little different, okay? This is little different because this is not about their participation in research and development per se, right? This is much more for the society at large, right? So the impact of these two workshops, and if this becomes a topic, will be way magnified compared to what NSF does in terms of in enhancing, you know, or encouraging participations of uh, women, underrepresented minorities, and persons with disabilities, right? So each one of them, yes, you know, we definitely want to encourage uh, all of that. But really, these are the only two workshops that are really focused on. So it's not like each one of them has a, an element that is connected with persons with disabilities, right? So uh, to just not uh, take this discussion too far, uh, you know, into deeper in the my thoughts, but if you look at the COVID pandemic situation, right? You look at how the accessibility of vaccines has disproportionately affected persons with disabilities, right? Certainly uh, that can be a topic of some of these other workshops, but that's not their focus area, right? So, so we are really zooming in here on persons with disabilities rehabilitation, assistive technologies, and their pathway forward uh, in terms of uh, opportunities, especially for workforce inclusion. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I think we're all on the same page. So now thank you yeah. for confirming that yeah. and affirming that. Uh, so with that being said, I think if I haven't seen any other questions, and thank you everyone, including uh, Ra, George, uh, Rachel, uh, Bart, uh, Carol, who have expressed uh, in the confirmation and how y'all feel, uh, really looking forward to continuing the ideation, hence uh, after these presentations to really dive into this. So thank you for continuing to share your comments and thank you Pradeep again uh, for building on that very much. With that, we'd love to have Grace. Now next on stage, I would love to hear from you because I understand you have some insights to share with us. So I wanna first thank everyone here for all of the hard work all of the wonderful introductions, all 174 of them that I see on this and the Slack channel and the wonderful YouTube video with the closed captioning options. I think, I think you all and the organizers, especially Patricia and Monica, you guys have done an amazing job and I'm so honored to be able to, to share some words with you today. I will keep my comments really brief because I, I, I think we're sort of at time already. Um, so I, I'm Grace Wong. I am a rotator from Johns Hopkins University. I've been at the NSF for about nine months, and I've, I've been honored to be able to uh, run the uh, Disability and Rehabilitation Engineering Program. Uh, and what I'll share with you today are some of the insights that I've learned from you all. And I will also speak about DARE in a very different way, which is normally when people talk to me about my program, I want it to be the top priority. But today, this is about the Convergence Accelerator. And so the Convergence Accelerator looks to both have convergent ideas, but that are acceleration ready. And that, as Pradeep mentioned, is the two to three time, time frame horizon, so rather two to three year time frame horizon. DARE, on the other hand, is much longer term. And we focus on fundamental engineering research. You can go to the next slide, Monica. And we're interested in creating new fundamental knowledge to improve the qualities of life of people with disabilities. And these technologies could also be applied to the environment in which people with disabilities are in and or their help their caregivers. We care about disabilities from all sorts of domains, whether it's a cognitive, a sensory, or a physical and movement related disability. And there's an, a link, an inextricable link between neuroscience and many uh, functional disabilities so the DARE project also sees a lot of uh, projects from, from the neuroscience community. Uh, for today's discussion, I, you know, I want you to be aware that you guys might have great conversations about a convergent idea, but it might not be acceleration ready. And for those longer term ideas, this is where I would encourage you to remember the DARE program and go to the next page, Monica, and, and come back and check with me and see if perhaps some of the ideas you come up with would be ready for the DARE program. And a successful DARE program is really looks 
to differentiate ourselves from other funding agencies that also uh, have a, give a lot of support to rehabilitation and uh, assistive technologies. So elements, important elements of a successful DARE program would require some kind of high risk, high reward that will lead to transformative outcomes. And these projects must advance fundamental engineering knowledge through some combination of validated design of technology systems, software, or models. You are allowed to have uh, studies with a small number of human subjects or patients. Uh, we do not do clinical trials, but we do allow for a small number of human and even animal studies. And we also welcome computational, theoretical, and experimental approaches. Um, so if you wanna go on to the next slide, Monica. So one of the things I did in preparing for today's session was I looked at our active portfolios to maybe pick up some signals on the kinds of projects that's been heavily funded by DARE. And what I did was I looked at all the DARE projects and I, I classified them in two different ways. Uh, so that you'll see two pie charts, one on the left and one on the right. And, and the first chart tells us that out of the different types of technologies currently being funded, there's an abundance of assistive technology shown in blue and followed by biological and injury mechanisms, restorative technologies, and training. When we reanalyze these same projects, we also notice, uh, can you go back to the previous slide? As shown in the orange sector of the pie chart, that the majority of the projects that's currently received funding are in the movement domain, such as upper and lower limb prosthetics, uh, orthosis, and, and robotics. And so I, I wonder, you know, might this be a signal that something in the in the assistive technology and movement domain may be ready for convergence. This is simply a suggestion. Um, and I've learned from many of the PIs in the communities uh, that there's a big gap in upper and lower limb prosthetics in terms of uh, affordability, lightweight, universality, and that you know, vendor parts are not transferable. So I wonder if these might be important questions uh, that, that ought to be discussed. Um, you know, and, and it, especially considering how much money has already been funded in, in uh, upper, and, uh, upper limb prosthetics by other funding agencies. So I wanted to just take a moment to, to let you guys look at this chart. Uh, and I also want to say that the DARE program is very proud to, to say that a third of our active awards actually go to non-R1 institutions. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, Monica. And what, one thing that um, I will say that the DARE program really encourages inclusion of people with disabilities from, this, um, from the study design perspective, as well as from an outreach perspective and a trainee perspective. And that's, that's a very important element for, for the DARE program. Now, DARE is just one of many programs at the NSF that care about uh, disability and rehabilitation technologies. So if you take down this landing site, you can go and click on the various projects listed at the landing site and, uh, and learn more about these programs and talk to um, the Cognizant program directors. Uh, should you, at the end of this Convergence Accelerator workshop, want to talk to me about a, a high risk, high reward and transformative project idea, feel free to reach out via email and I can uh, share with you a template for a one page uh, project summary that streamlines the proposal submission process. And with that, I will take any questions. Thank you, Grace, very much. Indeed, there is one already. And the question is, do these proportions reflect, I believe this one, uh, DARE goals or potentially point to areas of expansion for the future? Could you share some thoughts on that? This reflects what's currently active in the DARE project. So the, for, from a DARE perspective, I would love to see the pie chart be a little more uniform so that we can be more inclusive about our uh, different types of disabilities and solutions. Thank you. And I, I think it could point to expansion from a convergent accelerator perspective, since so much fundamental knowledge presumably already exists given the abundance of funding in the uh, movement in assistive technology areas. Thank you very much. And I also see from James, who's asking, would DARE fund low tech approaches that could still make a big impact? Um, that's a, an interesting question. Uh, we typically encourage high risk, high reward, and that typically 
um, is correlated with high tech, but, but it doesn't mean that an innovative application with an existing commercially available technology is not in scope. Uh, so if you have specific questions, you know, send me an email and I'll send you the, the outline for a one pager and we can start a conversation about whether your idea using a low tech uh, solution is suitable for the DARE program. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. On that note, if we can give a round of applause of appreciation, both for Grace and Pradeep, thank you very much for taking a time to actually be here to share. And I want to transition to build on again. I know we uh, originally wanted to make sure we take a bit of a break soon. So I want to cover a few more things before we take a quick break. So uh, give me a few more minutes, but thank you. Thank you very much for sharing. Again, we will share those information as, as we spend time together. If there's anything else that you feel like, hey, can we circle back and ask for them for more questions? Let us know. Uh, and we will circle back and predict grace. I have the permission that I'm going to follow up with both of you. So please don't hate me later on that. No worries. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Thank you very, very much. So I know they might either hop off or hang out a little bit, but let me transition into welcoming kind of a little bit more. Now you kind of had the long intro and wondering, okay, when are we ideating? <laughs> when are we ideating? We're gonna get there. And one more quick thing I want to do is kind of reminding us the intention of building on it. I think it's not fun to uh, walk, walk into something where we have different expectations. And so I just wanna share back, uh, this is a slide. Uh, oh yes, I know, Greg, I am loving the ideation already happening in the chat. Thank you for recognizing that as well. This is the reason why we have those multiple options. Uh, I just wanna highlight again, to build on that expectation, I wanna circle back to Anne's wonderful comment in the chat, uh, no pressure. Friends, we got this. And just want to highlight actually the opportunity for all of us to acknowledge that this is an opportunity to connect and learn. And so in addition to learning, ideating and collaborating, yes, uh, Pradeep, we heard the gold uh, medal analogy, but I also don't want to miss the opportunity of us enjoying this process of being here together. And fortunately, we were glad to hear what you all shared and how you feel. This is a small selection of the 100 plus uh, survey insights of what you've all communicated. The slide I'm sharing here shows the visual of a couple post-it notes of quotes from what participants have shared. Uh, and what you're seeing here is an example of what people have shared and what they're looking forward to. Uh, I understand, again, I'll share this later so you can see, but at a quick glance, you were hearing words of people, of course, expressing, I can't wait to share insights to NSF, but also I just can't wait to exchange ideas and really speak you know, for the community of the disabilities that really, really needs to be uh, advocated. Oh, thank you. You can keep it secret which one it is, but we're glad it was. These are randomly selected and thank you for your wise insights. In addition, we asked you all the question, well, what is working well? And these were some patterns that you have shared. And I just want to highlight again, while this is a small selection, I am again for visual uh, reference, another slide of some post-it notes of this time of the quotes that from the survey that has communicated what is already working well. And I want to just highlight how fun it is to recognize, yes, there are some parts that we are heading and have seen some development. We certainly have a lot of room to growth. But it's important to know what's working to focus more on areas that's not working. Uh, so we found this helpful to hear in the room what you found all to be working. Again, this is a small selection of the 100 plus survey. And indeed, you've shared many, many thoughts. And Monica, let me tell you all about the things we have to work on. And again, these are two slides I'm gonna share. Uh, this first part shares with the title, what still needs work. And I'm sharing more quotes from some of the selective insights. And I love the comments, which I hope again, to highlight the phrase, business unusual permits, which is a co-design and co-participation. Uh, we've already highlighted at the very beginning for some who have missed that many of you come from multiple industries, multiple voices, which is hugely uh, an invaluable and really thoughtful. Many of you have shared, we need less silo, less double standards. 
And so I encourage as we're communicating ideating together, how do we make this an opportunity? Ask those questions that I felt like maybe in the rooms last time I felt not safe to ask. But this time, maybe if I asked that, you know, Grace wouldn't feel like, oh, Monica doesn't know NSF. Like, no, Grace is going to smile. So like, okay, Monica, this is how it works. And I'm like, okay, thank you, Grace, for <laughs> understanding my question. And just feel more at ease. Because unless we feel comfortable to ask all those different questions, we will continue to remain in silo, which is again, the opportunity of business unusual of bringing all the co-designers here, which is all of you. Again, I love that uh, hearing more about what works. And again, the old fashioned approach is no longer good. There's also things that you have shared, what you wish others understood about you. And again, I'm sharing a couple quotes again from the audience. Some are here, some are also from the survey uh, who are participating, uh, not live. And I wanna bring this to surface because again, one of the aspects that I continue to notice from some of these comments is the comment that, you know, sometimes because we have a large number of non-visible disabilities, people don't recognize that and it's making it really hard for me. Uh, and you know, both those who are in technology or those who are not in technology sharing how it feels like there's not enough development that's really being accessible. And I think many of you have already again shared in the chat, but just highlighting even when you have shared uh, looking at Pradeep's slide of like, hey, can we make sure there's a person of disability represented in all these topics? Cause that is always being left out. You've shared it all here, which is the very reason why we are all here together. And again, these are a few more voices. Uh, again, I'm sharing another slide of some of the post-its of the comments. And again, I hope that as you're reading this and skimming this, the reminder that you feel is that if this is how you felt, the opportunity is you're not alone because all of us have felt one narrative or another here. And we're all going to figure out, explore, we look forward to sharing what we hear updates and grace to you on day four, but we're about to dive into all of this together. So what will happen in the next few days, I can promise you it will be messy <laughs> and I hope that is okay. I want to think of this visual again, uh, for those who might be wondering about the uh, creativity. Yes, thank you. Anonymous is very, very important. And thank you for highlighting that. Um, and uh, the creative process I just want to highlight is that at the beginning, it feels like we got it control. And to build on that, we will somehow get to the end, but in the midst of it, we're gonna have a moment of being a bit of messy. And I want to highlight the particular visual and, oh, and I see your comments. Thank you for uh, sharing that uh, clarification. I apologize for not clarifying if I have by chance shared a quote by anyone who has, uh, is not happy, please, please let me know. I will absolutely edit yours before I share the slide. So please let me know. I do not mean to, uh, I just wanted to highlight your honest insights because this room really wants to hear your voice. So, but please do let me know. Yes, Pradeep, I heard your voice. Yeah, Monica, can I make one, one point I forgot to mention? Yes, please. Um, which, which is, one of the challenges you have, right, uh, for this particular topic, uh, rehabilitative assistive technologies, workforce inclusion, which is a separate workshop, but collectively, you know, these two workshops will be kind of combined and presented as one theme or one track or one topic, right? I just want to be clear about that, right? So we cannot have two tracks, one related to this workshop, one related to the other workshop. Right. So just wanted to make that point clear. The second thing that you have to think about is, you know, when Patricio, myself, Ted, Grace and Vinod, all of us were kind of uh, there were multiple meetings to figure out, you know, uh, should we include this? Should we include that? You know, it's a very wide field. Right. You have disabilities, uh, the needs. Uh, the possible technologies, you know, something that may be very high risk, but, you know, could be very high gain, all kinds of considerations, right? Visual impairment, hearing, uh, neural, 
you know, physical, you name it, right? Uh, so one of the challenges uh, for you is going to be figuring out how can you somehow then ultimately prioritize this, right? Uh, and, and come up with not a very, very broad and a laundry list of things, right? Uh, that will not go uh, very far, okay? Uh, so a couple of examples I can give you quickly. One is one of the topics that we just released has to do with what is called as networked blue economy. So this has to do with our oceans and, and sustainability, climate change. But again, if you think about it, it's such a broad topic, right? It can bring in oceanographer, it can bring in engineers, robotics people, climate change, right? Uh, fisheries, you know, people, coastal communities, right? It is a very, very broad topic, you know, uh, Internet of Things underwater, you know, coral reef protection, deep sea diving, you know, uh, energy technologies using waves. You can quickly see how it can become very, very broad, right? So I think a similar kind of thing would apply to this particular topic, that it can be extremely broad and, and you have to, uh, Monica, you're right, you know, in four days it's going to be messy, but out of that mess, out of that high level of entropy, you know, I hope you can come up with the second law of thermodynamics will prevail and you will come up with something uh, that will be uh, uh, rather crisp and, and which, which will mean that some things will have to be left out, right? Uh, because either they are not convergent or not ready for acceleration. So kind of use those uh, filters, Patricio, uh, and keep that in your mind firmly that, you know, the, you know, we cannot possibly fund everything with the 25, 30, 35 million dollars that we'll eventually have. So you have to think through very carefully. Uh, and I'm sure Ted is going to be a great asset. Ted, I'm so happy you're part of this group uh, and, and all of you actually, honestly. So kind of think on those lines as to how can we come up with something that will be in in form of a, almost like a solicitation that these are the ideas that you think are the you know top ideas that are in need that are convergent and ready for acceleration. I meant to mention this, but I kind of overlooked. So I'm hearing that no pressure, everyone. <laughs> Just going to emphasize why we're so excited being here. And I see Ted also. Please chime in. Oh, I was just going to say thank you for the and and, uh, and Grace for uh, uh, getting me involved in this at a at a very early stage. I appreciate you uh, uh, including me. I I bring a, I guess a legacy, a historical perspective of of the disability program uh, at, at NSF. So I, I think you're right, Pradeep and Grace, that you know we this isn't a one size fits all. We do need to focus in certain areas. However, having said that. Uh, I've been reading a lot of these uh, these comments in the in the chat. I think we're all in agreement that wherever we go, whatever direction we we go into, we want greater inclusion of the disability community in the technology that's designed for the disability community. And I think that has historically always been a challenge. It will probably continue to be a challenge, but I think this uh, the results of this workshop, can certainly address that in a very, very significant way. Absolutely. And this is the very reason why I share this beautiful visual on the slide of the messy room. Uh, again, I want to highlight knowing that we are all coming from different lens. And again, thank you, Ted, for just reminding us again, yes, there are certain aspects that we will be probably keeping a lookout for the convergence, but this is the opportunity of having all diverse experts. We understand you might get some inspiration. It was like, you know what? I got the product idea. I want to work on that. I have been working on, or I got collaboration ideas just from this room. So those are all the opportunities that we are looking out for. And the one particular piece that I am curious to highlight here is right here. If the mouse is showing is the other edge 
of the direction where we can clearly see we feel like we are going off tangent and this is the reason why as Pradeep and Ted was sharing I started to smile because I was about to highlight how can we take the courage to know that even if it feels like we're heading the wrong direction we will naturally pull back in back to the mess of ideating and exploring and so when you feel that you're feeling a little bit off tangent or you feel like that's an idea we're not really sure let's let it be for a little bit because we won't know, we might be converging a little too fast and too early. And so I want to encourage as convergence, yes, uh, and Grace, we promise we will get there on day four, but today and tomorrow, I give everyone the permission, whenever you're tempted to converge, you can say, Monica said yes, and, and we're not supposed to converge just yet. Uh, in fact, to build that a little bit more, I'm gonna cement this image and i'm sharing you the slide kind of the breakdown of what i mean by divergent and conversion bottom line the first two days which is today and day two on may 18 we will be doing divergent this is when i want you to say yes and go yes and five times building on ted's comment as well because there is so much that we want to explore all of it and pradeep's and grace and everyone's and everything you're already sharing in the chat when we get to day three and day four, though, that's when we can explore, okay, what's the part that goes into probably uh, the solicitation and the reporting? And what's the piece that we want to make sure we continue to remember and honor that might not necessarily fit in the convergence? And that's the way we will continue to honor space. And so I want to just recognize just because we are converging, which is the sense of like closing down and determining the top few selected ideas to say that there isn't an opportunity still to say Yes, and. Um, and so to build on that, the next slide I am sharing, for those who'd like to read the description of divergent and convergent thinking, I just want to highlight that a little bit more for those who are newer to that concept. Uh, and the simple way to think about it is, again, divergent is we want to explore the free flow, uh, the nonlinear thinking. So I apologize in advance for anyone who were feeling like, Monica, where's the agenda? I need to know the time breakdown. Thank you for forgiving me in advance because it was intentional. We want to give as enough free flow um, to accommodate and build in time for those open innovation and conversations, including such as the chat. Convergence is when we are thinking a lot about the speed, accuracy, and logic. And really in the way, as you know, Pradeep has highlighted, uh, the Olympic, I think, was a beautiful marathon, uh, a visual to think about in OK. Uh, unfortunately, there is only one person who gets the gold medal, but we all still can be a winner <laughs> in a different framework together. So we're going to aim for both, uh, but we're focusing first, not just for that, but for all of us to be here together. So again, we will share this for those who want to read more, but I just want to share that slide reference for those who are learning and hearing the terminology for the first time. Again, that is divergent thinking and convergent thinking, and uh, I hope that you will enjoy using the phrases. In the future. And I just want to highlight a few more things that Pradeep's mentioned at the beginning. We're all want to encourage beginner's mindset. We're not here to focus something too specific or too broad. And I'm going to just honor IP concerns because I'm a business owner as well. I always think about what part of creativity innovation I share is going to be intellectual pro property protected or not. Uh, I just want to honor that we want to focus on thinking about this in the context that, hey, we're all here to share. Of course, if there's a particular innovation thing that you're doing internally in your company that you don't feel comfortable sharing, we honor and recognize that. So it's okay that you don't share that piece. Uh, and then building on that, if there's pieces that you feel like, I do wanna share, but I just can't share this. I, can I ask for people to, can you promise that it won't go outside? The room, can we all agree to honor? We will honor that space. Uh, and so I ask for us that we, we Think in that norm, and again, I'll share this uh, longer text. Again, I the slide describes the three questions that I just verbally communicated. Uh, I verbally communicated the simple version of the answer, but you can read the text version a little later. But I hope that gives a little bit of reassurance because I sure agree, if I'm gonna be ideating, where's my idea going? <laughs> it's a question I will be wondering. And we wanna highlight just how much we're gonna honor your voice and your work by shaping as many spaces as we can. And, Please, as you've already done so, hold us accountable, ask us questions, let us know how we can make this as easy and more thoughtful and inclusive as Ted has highlighted as well. Um, 
So as a visual learner, I didn't share one more visual. Again, a reminder, we will be doing divergent convergent. And for those who's curious what tools we will be using, we're going to be interchangeably exploring Google Documents in Miro. Now, I have to acknowledge Miro. Uh, everyone has a handful and many have shared that it is not going to be as useful real time compared to some of the chats. And we are still working on the design element, how to make the Miro instruction as simple so that way it will be usable. We might come back and decide a completely different way and just stick with Google Docs. So we will update you for day two. But for today, don't have to worry about it. It's only going to be on Google Docs. And so you will be seeing that shortly. Um, after I finish this part, and then we have a round of conversations. Uh, and I just want to give us a visual story. The slide I have here uh, says ham in the oven lesson, and I have a picture of the ham in the oven. And what I mean by this is that so often when we come together, we come in the aspects of seeing that things have been done a certain way. So that's how it should be. Why I love the Ham in the Oven story is about a family narrative of the mistake we make often. A daughter mentioned to uh, her mom, was like, wait, why are we always cutting the ham in the oven? The mom said, oh, this is how you cook the ham best. You must cut the ham in the oven before you put it in the oven. And then finally, after many of pestering conversations, she finally said, oh, you know what? I don't know. This is how my mom used to cook the ham. You should ask mom. So. She went to grandmother, her grandmother, why do we always cook, cut the ham in the oven before we cook it? And guess what the grandmother said? Well, dear, that was the only way I could cook. Our oven was small back in the day. <gasps> Mohammed, I'm seeing your smile. Look how many hams we have cut for three decades unnecessarily, but just assuming status quo. So I wanna share this story to remind ourselves, we're gonna have moments even in our conversations, we're gonna feel like, oh, this is how the way it's done, Monica. You just don't know our industry. To hold on to that temptation to ask, is that truly the only way? Are we perhaps cutting the ham without asking and wondering, maybe the oven has changed. Maybe the landscape is now possible. And how can we reimagine that together? So with that, I wanna remind us again, the norms of the safe room, Assuming good intention, we will make a ton of mistakes and forgive one another through that process and then learn from that. Uh, I'm going to add the word curiosity with our messy room together. Being curious in the messy room feels a little less scary than just messy. I know there's also a lot of parents, you don't like messy rooms from your children, I understand. But what if we can be curious about that? And we'll discover some gems. And hence, everyone's voice. No voice is more important or less important. And I just want to highlight that again. Um, and a couple of virtual etiquettes, uh, which I've been highlighting and I'm practicing. So thank you for some who have reminded reminding me when I forget to describe the slides, please, please let me know if I forget. Uh, is you know one getting a chance to continue to build on that, continue to slowly describe as you're in one of your rooms. And while I am recording now, just for the intro, we will not be recording after uh, this break that we have. So we get into real-time innovation and ideation. Um, and for those who might have a lot of background, uh, you know, keep, keeping a clean could help for others who, uh, for visual. And as a facilitator, I would like to share some tips and tricks for all of us, because we will be diving into a lot of conversations. Again, I will be sharing uh, these phrases. Jennifer, if I can have your help, maybe we can put these phrases in the chat so that way they can scroll and find. But these are phrase toolkits that I hope you can carry not only in these four days, but for your life. Even in your family conversations or friends and colleagues, I promise it will be beautifully helpful. What I mean by that is that often when we are in agreement or disagreement or have a different point of view, the way we for express might actually be the very barrier for the other person to hear us or for us to connect in a way. And so instead of saying like, oh, I disagree with you, or like this is not how it's done. How can we pause and say, you know, I noticed as uh, Ted, you were sharing that it really reminded me of that story of how I felt when I was also stuck there and I didn't know. You know, it made me wonder, Grace, as you were sharing that, uh, what I can do differently. And Pradeep, I hear you. As you said that, it made me think about how, wow, all the different things we can do differently. And Patricia, yes, and how will we explore creating more safe rooms 
together. And uh, Karen, as you share this, this makes me also feel that I cannot wait to talk about. So thank you, Ra. Uh, thank you, James, for all sharing your comments in the chat. And so see how that feels also and how they're doing that. So I, I just want to share that quick tips. You can take a screenshot. We'll put it in the chat as well. But I wanted to share that as a facilitator that you can all facilitate in your dialogues in rooms as well. OK, I shared a lot. The few more things I want to share before we dive into a quick little break is just that, again, why we're here not possible with our wonderful team. I just want to make sure that we get to highlight that. And Patricia, with that, I just want to circle back briefly with you. Regarding, I'm I'm ready to go. I think um, I think every looking at the chats, I think everybody is uh, is excited and they're ready to share. You know, there's, there's a lot of uh, ideas. Um, divergence is happening as we as we sit. Love it, love it. Thank you, Patricia, for help first making this happen. And we'll certainly be circling back with you and many others. So again, Ted, Aiden, myself, um, and you probably already noticed Jennifer, Florence, and I from Innovators Box from a facilitating side will be seeing us throughout. And uh, all of you, uh, this is a quick snapshot of some and all of you, again, whether you are live as well as those who are here uh, that who have shared in the survey as well. Um, and again, as I've shared, you know, one more than 144 people, there's been a few more people signed up since I put this slide. I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Uh, so again, I shared this at the beginning. I will stop recording shortly. Uh, and for today's theme, we're going to be talking about openness. And uh, yes, if there's any logos that is missing, please let me know. We will add that. So thank you. 